Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> okay, everyone. Uh, wow, so many people today. It's nice, isn't it? Uh, a bit more. Uh, it's good. Uh, <laughs> so that's uh, excellent. So uh, just to those of you who are you haven't been around for the uh, for the last uh, few days, uh, that we have been looking at various ways of perceiving the world, uh, and the idea is that. Um, if you think about the Buddha, he saw the world in a particular way. That particular way is often called right view. And one of the things uh, on the Buddhist path is to try to see the world more like the Buddha. Yeah? So if you want to be like the Buddha, you have to see the world like the Buddha. You want to be like the Buddha? Yeah? <laughs> okay, good. That means you are on the right track. Yeah. So uh, it's handy to be like the Buddha because the Buddha didn't have much suffering. Yeah, very little suffering. Yeah? and a lot of wisdom, and it's kind of nice to have a little suffering and much wisdom. So uh, being more like the Buddha is kind of uh, advisable. Uh, so uh, uh, we're going to uh, look a little bit more uh, at these uh, various kinds of perceptions before we move on to the second half, uh, part two of this uh, uh, retreat. Uh, uh, we kind of changed the program a little bit, uh, which means that those of you who are new, you're going to be thrown in a little bit on the deep end uh, because we just come into the deep perceptions and these kind of things. Uh, so I hope you're okay with that. Uh, and uh, if there are any issues, then you can always ask questions uh, as we go along. Uh, so we have been looking at a sutta called the uh, Giri Mananda Sutta. And this sutta talks about 10 different kinds of perceptions. And these perceptions, they were used specifically to, uh, as a paritta to heal a monk who was sick, which is kind of interesting here. Yeah. Uh, but that is not the main point. The main point is actually the discussion of these perceptions uh, and to understand how we can use them also in our own practice to have uh, to enhance our ability to move forward on the Buddhist path. That's kind of the idea. So we had just yesterday, we just had a look at the perception of uh, ugliness. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the asubha, uh, yeah, asubha practice, the asubha sanya also called the perception of the non-beautiful. Sometimes non-beautiful is better because uh, that's really the idea, is to create a neutral mind, the mind that is not attached so much. So I think uh, non-beautiful might be more useful than uh, ugliness as such. Now we're going to look at another perception, and this is called the perception of drawbacks. Yeah, this is the Adinava Sanya. And as I mentioned yesterday in the suttas, you have these uh, uh, three qualities that often go together, the uh, asada, the adinava, and the nisarana. And uh, when you kind of uh, uh, balance these things out, the asada is the gratification or the positive aspect in things. Uh, adinava is the drawback or the negative aspect. Uh, and when you kind of look at these things and you balance them out, you find out that the drawback is much worse than the gratification. And then you move towards the nisarana, which is the, uh, the freedom or the liberation uh, from these things. Uh, so uh, what is the perception of drawbacks? And you'll be surprised how simple it is in many ways. Uh, yeah? And there's many ways you can do this. Uh, this is a very simple kind of perception, and it's something that almost anyone can do if they wish. Uh, it's when a mendicant has gone to the wilderness uh, or to the foot of a tree or to an empty hut, uh, and they reflect like this. And uh, as I was saying yesterday, this particular way of phrasing things, uh, this indicates that we are dealing with deep meditation usually. Yeah? The idea of going to the wilderness, going to the foot of a tree or an empty hut uh, is the idea of moving out away from civilization, moving away from people, moving away from villages, uh, moving away from uh, cafe lattes. Uh, yeah? I just, plain black coffee instead. <laughs> no latte. Yeah? Latte is kind of the definition of civilization sometimes. No cinemas. Yeah? No, none of all of these kind of things. Instead, you move to the trees. You're the trees, the birds, the waterfalls, the rocks, and these kind of things. And uh, so that is where you can find peace of mind. One of the things that uh, is kind of fascinating, we often talk about uh, giving up the five sense world. Uh, but what we forget is that the five sense world is actually very broad. Yeah, sometimes it can be very powerful five sense world, which gives rise to very strong desires. But the five sense world can also be very subtle and very calming. Yeah, if you use it in the right way. 
And this is the idea of using the five sense world in a calming way. Yeah, yeah? seeing the greenery. Yeah? I don't know if you, when you walk around the forest, yeah, you feel, tend to feel peaceful. Yeah? When you look at the trees, you tend to feel peaceful. Yeah? It's very different from looking at the advertisements down in uh, the Cent KL, you know, the uh, Twin Towers or whatever it's called. What's it called? The Twin, the, 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 yeah, or something like that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, so it, it is about how we use the five senses. It's actually very, very important. Uh, and that can move us either towards uh, calm and peace and meditation, or it can move us away from this. And this is why the wilderness is so useful. The Aranya, Aranya literally means not of the king, or an empty hut, yeah? Empty huts are available at Jana Grove if you want to come to empty. It's not really an empty hut, it's more like an empty room, but anyway, close enough to empty hut. So, um, so uh, it is about deep meditation. In this case, it's a little bit strange because this particular uh, contemplation is fairly straightforward. It's not so obvious why it should be uh, done in solitude like this, but maybe it is because... Uh, it is um, specifically here meant for monastics, that's what it says, but I think this contemplation can also be extended to everyone because it's a fairly obvious one. Uh, but uh, anyway, regardless, uh, this is a, a unique place in the suttas that talks about this particular perception. So it's kind of exciting for that reason. Uh, so let's see how exciting it is. Do uh, you think it's exciting? <laughs> When you see it, you might be disappointed if you think this is going to be exciting. Yeah. So, uh, so here we go. The body has much suffering yeah, and many drawbacks. Okay, not that exciting, right? <laughs> At least we hope talking about bliss maybe it would be exciting. But hmm. All right, anyway. For this body is beset by many kinds of affliction, yeah, such as the following. Yeah. So these are the afflictions of the body. Diseases of the eye, of the inner ear, of the nose, of the tongue, of the body, of the head, of the outer ear, <laughs> of the mouth, of the teeth, uh, and the lips. Cough, asthma, catarrh, inflammation, fever, stomach ache, painting, dysentery, gastric pain, cholera, leprosy, boils, eczema, tuberculosis, epilepsy, herpes, itch, scab, smallpox, scabies, hemorrhage, diabetes, piles, pimples. Uh, <laughs> pimples, okay, and ulcers. So uh, that that probably is a, I don't know if that is all the diseases they had classified in ancient India, but it's still a fairly small list, right, uh, compared to all the illnesses that actually exist. Uh, and where is cancer? Where is heart disease? Uh, where is all these kind of modern illnesses that we, that we have? Yeah, it's kind of missing. That should also be on that list. So you can add a little bit to that list if you like, yeah. Or you can write your own commentary. But if you write commentary, you have to do it in Pali. Yeah? So you have to find Pali words for heart disease and, uh, and cancer, etc. Yeah? That can, of course, be done. Yeah? We can do that. Uh, Pali words for computers, etc. <laughs> so affliction, and then we have more affliction. This is not the end yet. Affliction stemming from disorders of the bile, phlegm, wind, or their conjunction. Affliction caused by change in the weather, yeah, by not taking care of yourself, by overexertion, or as the result of past deeds. Cold, heat, hunger, th thirst, defecation, and urination. And so they meditate observing the drawbacks in this body. This is called perception of drawbacks. So um, there's a long list of illnesses there, and I suspect that that long list may have been added at some point, uh, that originally maybe it was just uh, the uh, affliction stemming from disorders of bile, phlegm, wind, and their conjunction, because these are, this is the ancient Indian medical system, the Ayurvedic uh, medical system, uh, yeah, and this is how it was classified, uh, and all this list coming before that is just kind of more specific diseases, but everything is actually classified within the uh, disorder stemming from bile, phlegm, and wind, uh, the ancient Indian medical system. Uh. So, um, yeah, so um, is that useful, do you think, yeah, thinking about these illnesses? Uh, yeah, uh, sometimes it can be useful. Uh, um, I, like I mentioned before, sometimes I, you know, it's useful to remember that many of these illnesses are inherited. Uh, 
And I don't know if you, I don't know what your ancestors, what they have died from, you know, or your grandparents or your parents. Uh, but I think my, both my father and my sister died of cancer. Uh, and so that's kind of interesting for me because it means maybe those genes are, exist in me. Good, high op- potential that they're actually there. Yeah. So sometimes I think, where is the cancer? Uh, yeah. Maybe it's already there, waiting to kind of probably already growing. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, and that kind of brings in a sense of reality to it. Because if it isn't the cancer, it's something else. Uh, the cancer here is almost like a metaphor for any kind of illness that you may have. Uh, and so it's kind of a useful way of thinking about things. Where is the cancer? Uh, have I got, if I have cancer, am I okay with that? Uh, maybe, maybe not, not sure. <laughs> is it okay? Uh, it has to be okay. It has to be okay because this is the nature of the body. Yeah, it is in this way. Uh, and again, the power of these kind of reflections when you realize uh, uh, this, the nature of the body in this way is that it makes the body far less interesting. Yeah? Yeah, it makes the world of the five senses less interesting. Yeah? And when that world is less interesting, the spiritual path becomes far more powerful. Uh, understanding the limits of the world means you also understand the power, the significance and the importance of the spiritual path at the same time. Uh, that is what it should do to you. Uh, if it does that to your mind, uh, shifts the attention from world, worldly things to spiritual things, uh, then these kind of uh, uh, contemplations, these perceptions are doing their work. If they make you sad and depressed, uh, please don't do it. Uh, if they make you sad and depressed, do meta meditation instead. Uh, do kind of something which is positive. Yeah, Do the uh, coffee meditation. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, I apologize. Like, people give me so much coffee in the morning. I was just coffee left, right, and center when I came down the bottom. Uh, I couldn't even give any justice to all the coffee that was given to me. So I, I apologize for that. I only, my stomach is only so big, you know. I, I, uh, and even after a while, I, I too get a bit poisoned if I have too much coffee. So I have to know the limits. So, <laughs> so um, the point here is that there are all these uh, illnesses, yeah, and uh, they... And in a sense, when we talk about bile, phlegm, and wind, all illnesses are included in that. But then comes this other part of this, which actually is quite interesting here. So please pay attention to this really interesting part. <laughs> okay, maybe we'll see what happens. Affliction caused by changes in the weather. Yeah, the uttu parinama. Uttu is like the, the, um, the seasons or the, or, the, or the weather changing in the seasons. Yeah. So some of you, when the aircon is on, it is too cold for you. Huh? That is an affliction caused by change in the weather, the, in, the kind of BGF weather, yeah, in the internal weather. Huh? It's true, isn't it? Some of you are kind of coughing away. I think it's just great. I'm really happy with this kind of temperature. Huh? And then some of you are wearing blankets and things. So this is kind of the problem, yeah? <laughs> You're never really satisfied. It's kind of always, uh, always uncertain. And it is, it is uh, you know, it is unpleasant, right? Uh, when it's too hot, it's unpleasant, it's too humid. Uh, in Perth, the weather was really dry. So when I come to KL or Singapore, it's like, wow, the humidity is kind of unbearable for me. <laughs> when I can, no, actually, I can bear it quite easily. But it's, uh, it's very, uh, you certainly feel it. Uh, and it certainly feels very different. Uh, and a lot, lot, I know a lot of people who originally come from this part of the world. Yeah, We have lots of immigrants from Malaysia in Perth and all over Australia. Uh, and from Thailand and from everywhere. And once they get used to the dry weather, they can't go back again to, <laughs> to, to the kind of rig, orig, original weather over here because it's just too, uh, you know. So it's kind of we're changing all the time. Things are moving around. Uh, so affliction caused by the weather is one of the unavoidable afflictions. Uh, it is just part of life. Yeah? Is that because you have made bad karma in the past? Uh, you get the afflictions of the weather? This is an interesting question. This is actually what's coming up next. Uh, is this, how is this related to kamma? Yeah, this is kind of a very interesting point. Uh, the next one is by not taking care of yourself, uh, an affliction caused by that. This can also be called by carelessness. Uh, yeah, like I was mentioning the other day, the simile of walking across the street here in KL. Uh, and if you walk across the street without look, looking left and right uh, and you get run over by a car, uh, is that because of kamma or is it because of stupidity? Uh, <laughs> Probably stupidity, right? Because uh, you can't really blame Kamma when you not, don't look left and right. Uh, you're not taking care of yourself. Uh, if you don't look after and eat reasonably well, yeah, don't eat, don't follow Ajahn Brahm too much in your diet. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
if you don't look after the body a little bit, uh, you don't do a little bit of exercise and all of this kind of thing, not taking care of yourself, of course, you can expect problems because of that. Uh, so, uh, so, yeah, so this is kind of interesting. Uh, so the changes in the weather, the world around us, uh, not taking care of yourself. Uh, the next one is overexertion. Uh, this has also been translated as assault. So, yeah, Vicky Bode translates as assault, uh, but the Sujato as overexertion. I'm not really sure which one is correct. They sound quite different. Uh, this shows you sometimes how uncertain the Pali can be sometimes. Uh, but let's say it is assault. Uh, yeah. uh, assault is like you go into the city at the wrong time uh, when the wrong people are around uh, and you get assaulted and steal all your money and they knock you unconscious at the same time. And this happens in the world. Uh, and so assault is another thing. So is that because of kamma or not? Uh, Surely, if you get assaulted, it must be because of bad karma in the past, right? Uh, mm. and, if you, and if you get all these kind of illnesses, uh, like cancer, is that because of bad karma in the past? Uh, yeah, you think yes. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, all right. That's, yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah, we shall soon find out, right? <laughs> so, uh, so and this is an interesting, very interesting question. Uh, and it's actually very important uh, because there's a tendency for us to blame everything that happens in our life on Kama. And the question is, is that useful? Is that helpful? Or is it actually deluding us into uh, thinking about the Buddhist teachings in the wrong way? Uh, so this is actually quite an interesting point. So let's see. Let's, let's have a look at the next one. Uh, yeah? What is the last one here? Or, it says there, or, not and, but or, or, as a result of past deeds. Uh, so these are alternative reasons uh, why we have afflictions. Uh, yeah, the only the last one is because of kamma, the result of past deeds. That's kamma and vipaka, yeah, actions in the past and the results that we have from those actions in the past. This is the last alternative. This is an alternative. Assault, not looking after yourself or illnesses are other reasons why we have afflictions. So that means, what that means, of course, is that a lot of the afflictions that we have, a lot of the illnesses that we have in this life, have got nothing to do really with past karma. What they have to do is with the fact that, well, this is just a human condition. If you have been born as a human being, you can expect to get illnesses. This is what life is like. If you have been born as a human being, you can expect to get assaulted occasionally. Hopefully not too often, but occasionally it can happen. Yeah. If you uh, don't look after yourself uh, as, as a human being, you don't take care of yourself, you can expect problems, yeah? Not because of particular karma in the past, simply because you are silly, yeah? You're not looking after yourself. Uh. And the same thing with the weather. Uh. And so what this uh, shows us uh, is that we should be very careful with kind of uh, blaming everything on karma. Everything is nothing to do with karma. It is simply because you are a human being, yeah? Yeah, you've been born as a human being. These are the things you can expect. So why does that matter? And the, one of the reasons why it matters is because uh, sometimes we have this idea that if we just do the right karma, everything will be okay. So in this life, I'm just going to be kind to everyone. I'm not going to say anything bad. I'm going to do all the right things. That means in the future, I will have no problems. I will have a long life, no illnesses, and then I will control my destiny as a consequence. But actually, you can't do that. This is the outcome. This is what it's saying here. You can't control your destiny in that way. Even if you are super duper kind, even if you are kind of a saint among humanity, even if you are the Buddha. Yeah, the Buddha had illnesses towards the end of his life. You can imagine the good karma the Buddha had from the past. Take someone like Ajahn Shah, Ajahn Shah, Ajahn Brahm's teacher. Yeah, he also had very severe illnesses towards the end of his life. Yeah, how does that happen? Well, the reason why it happens uh, is because you were born as a human being. Uh, that is why this happens. Uh, yeah, and this is kind of the reason for this. So the problem is not that we can't control these things. As long as we are part of the sangsaric system, uh, we can expect these things to happen. Uh, very often people come to the monastery and, uh, you know, the kind of questions they will ask very often is, oh, I lost my job or, you know, my husband or wife is unfaithful to me. Uh, or why, why is this happening to me? What did I do in the past to deserve this? This is kind of a very standard question, and it's very easy for a monk to say, yeah, you probably did this in the past, that in the past, that's why you got this. Yeah. this is, 
and uh, and then they say, oh, sadhu, sadhu, they're very happy. And, and then they kind of get a kind of closure, yeah, because they know they did that. And then kind of then the conclusion, and if I don't do that in the future, I will be free of those things. Uh, but that actually is a wrong conclusion. Uh, this is what this points out. Uh, you will, will never be fr free of those things. Uh, so the whole question, what did I do in the past to deserve this, is actually a misguided question there. Because that is not the point. The point is you became a human being. That was a mistake. Yeah? <laughs> we are all here. We all, we, I mean, I made the same mistake, right? We all made that mistake. And we are here. That is the problem. That is the real issue. And so this comes back to the idea that rebirth is actually the problem. The continuation of the round, the continuation, that is actually what the, what the real issue is. And so it is important to understand the limitations of the idea of kamma and vipaka. Yeah? It has certain limitations to it. Uh, and this is a very good example that shows you those limitations uh, on how that works. Uh, maybe we should have um, some, a workshop on uh, kamma, vipaka, that kind of stuff. That might be interesting. Yeah? Yeah? There's lots of stuff to be said about that. Uh, yeah? Okay. Anyway, Bobby, make, make a note. Of <laughs> no, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize. I, I'm... <laughs> I'm treating you like my secretary or something. That's terrible. I, I didn't mean that. I'm just being, being naughty, that's all. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's good. That's really, I appreciate that. Let's see what happens. Okay. So, and then, of course, you have all these other things, cold, heat, hunger, thirst, defecation, and urination. Yeah, these are the kind of the uh, side effects of being a human being. Yeah. And uh, they meditate observing the drawbacks in this body. This is called the perception of drawbacks. Yeah. And again, the idea here is to move you towards a more spiritual life. That's kind of supposed to be the result. And that is when it is works properly. Yeah. <clears throat> mm. Gee, the creepers. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it? Uh, 10 o'clock already. So uh, this is how life disappears. It goes so fast and it kind of dissipates time. Um, I'm just wondering, uh, one of these kind of weird things in here, he has pimples in there. You see that? Uh, pimples? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> not sure what that is doing there. It seems kind of a bit out of place, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, kind of smallpox piles and pimples. I mean, so it seems to be... <laughs> I think the... I think actually I don't like this translation. It is more like... Uh, it's a much more serious skin disease than pimples. Uh, yeah, more like uh, more like ulcers or um, or uh, what are they called when you get can kind of get some boils, maybe something like that. Yeah, or even even more serious than boils. Uh, yeah, so psoriasis maybe. Okay, yeah, maybe something like that. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, so that's it. <laughs> so uh, I'm anyway. Yeah. All right, so maybe just, let's do a little bit of meditation before we uh, move on to the next one. Now. Anyone have any questions to ask or comments to make? Ah, Ajay, uh, yeah. this sutta always, uh, for each of the perceptions, it always begins with going to the wilderness, uh, empty heart or root of tree. And uh, mm. I wonder how does it reconcile with another sutta, Upari Sutta in Amputara uh, Nikaya, Book of Ten, mm. uh, Sutta 99, where uh, Bono Upari wanted to go to wilderness to practice by himself, but then uh, mm. Buddha uh, stopped him mm. because he mentioned that uh, for those who do not mm. have any samadhi, uh, if you go to wilderness and practice, then your mind will be rocked, like mm. said. And then they provided a simile where the large bull elephant has no problem with taking bath in a deep lake, but then a rabbit will sink or float away. So, uh, what's your comment, Bante? Yeah, on, on this perspective. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good point. Yeah. So, first of all, not not all of these perceptions are prefixed by this. This is the first thing. Yeah. So, I, I know this one here was prefixed by that. This particular one, the drawbacks of the body, you're right, it has the, uh, the starting point, going to the wilderness, empty hut, etc. But if you go to the one before that, which is the Asuba perception, it doesn't actually have that. Um, 
perception of ugliness. Yeah, so it just says that when a man they can examine the body, it doesn't say anything about going to the uh, to the wilderness or anything. Uh, the one before that again, however, you're right. It talks about that. It is the deeper perceptions about uh, understanding the five senses or six senses as non-self. Yes, yeah, so this is quite profound. Uh, so I think the uh, difference is that in the um, Sutta with Upali, uh, uh, what you are seeing there is more like an extended period of seclusion uh, where it talks about withdrawing from the world and being by yourself, uh, ekata, bupakata, and these things. And the kind of the implication there is that you're doing it for the long term. Uh, here, I think uh, it is, you know, more, could be more short term, for example. Yeah, like, uh, uh, like at Bodhinyana Monastery, we have a lot of seclusion in the huts, but we also meet together usually at least once a day or something like that. Uh, and, or maybe you go for a two-week uh, secluded retreat, uh, but you don't usually stay away for six months or three years or anything like that. Because uh. so I think that is the difference. Uh, so if you really want to go into full seclusion for an extended period, like a year or whatever, then you should really have your samadhi together before you do that, like the jhanas or whatever. Uh, so your mind is very clear and very powerful, and you, you can see the dangers if they are about to arise or whatever. Uh, I think that's the distinction there. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. I read about Ajahn Chah illness, uh -huh. and uh, it said there was what happened was the it was the medical mistake. Mm. Something that uh, he got injection at the wrong spot or something. No. Uh -huh. That caused him the you know the to be paralyzed. Yeah. So is that his karma or not? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you don't know. Yeah, this is this is one of those things. Is that uh, karma is uh, it, it can be from karma, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah. And I think anything that happens in the human realm can be. Either way, and we don't know which one it is, and it doesn't really matter. We don't have to have that answer. Uh, if you, the one of the kind of famous suttas that talks about uh, the results of kamma is the the Chula Kamma Vibhanga Sutta, the shorter sutta uh, on the analysis of kamma, Manika 135. It talks about this, and in that sutta, it says that uh, if you kill, then you can. Uh, the result is short life. Yeah, if you kill. Uh, 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 and then it has a number of things. If you steal, the result is poverty or whatever in the future. So what it says is that if you do a bad thing, it will have a certain result. Uh, but it doesn't say that every time it has that result, it must be because, uh, you know, but just because you have a short life. It is not always because you kill. But if you do kill, you will definitely have a short life. But there can be many reasons why you have a short life, like a tsunami yeah, in uh, in Sumatra or whatever, lots of people die. I would say that's not because of kamma, everyone having the same kamma. It's because maybe some of them had bad kamma, but many of them just were in the wrong place at the wrong time. And uh, so I think that is, so, so you can never really tell. Kamma may have an impact, but it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. Uh, yeah. Uh, good morning, Ajahn. Good morning. Vyasa, uh, you mentioned the importance of uh, ability to contemplate on uh, death mm -hmm. during meditation. Uh, I was wondering how should one go about doing that? So one contemplate on the shutting down of the body, or contemplate on the scene during the wake, or during the cremation process. How, how should one go about that? Yeah. I think it would be good if Ajahn can probably do a guided meditation on that. Yeah, sure. And we can we can do it. I'm very happy to do that. Uh, we we can. Um, but uh, the um, the main thing uh, about the death contemplation is just to know that death can happen at any time. I think that's the most most important thing. Yeah. So that if you are aware that death can happen at any time, then now is the time to let go. Now is the only opportunity you have to let go. You know, because you don't know when it's going to happen. It's only now is the possibility. Yeah. And once you kind of understand that, once that sinks in, now is the time to let go. Uh, that is when it has this effect on you. Uh, so uh, it is a contemplation that you have to do many times to build up that perception. Uh, so that when you then use, when you then uh, have that perception built up, then you can actually apply it in meditation practice. Uh, so now is the time to let go. Yeah, I, I don't know when I'm going to die. So because I don't know, now is the only opportunity I have to let go. Uh, and so let go straight away. Uh, you don't wait. Uh, 
Um, but we can also do a guided meditation on this. Uh, so this that will be more like uh, uh, to give you an idea of what letting go actually means in this context. Uh, and so we, you know, the way I often do that is just the idea of uh, uh, imagining yourself on your deathbed. Uh, and what does that feel like? Uh, what is the process that you go through? Uh, and then, then that will give you some idea of the kind of letting go that uh, may happen as a consequence. Uh, yeah. So sure, no, that's a good idea. Let's let's do that uh, at some point, maybe tomorrow morning or something. Yeah, yeah. So for those of you who are not ready to die, please don't come tomorrow morning. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> okay. Anyone else like to, to say anything? Yeah. Morning, Ajahn. Just one. Want to ask, right? I just mentioned about the uh, about karma, yeah. and you mentioned about the sutta. Can you repeat what sutta is that? This is the uh, Giri Mananda Sutta we're looking at. Uh, yeah, we are in the middle of that sutta. Uh, no, no, you make reference just now to to karma that you know. Um, though the karma oh. indicates that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. So you mean the uh, Chula Kama Vibhanga Sutta, Majjhima one hundred and thirty-five, the shorter sutta on the analysis of karma. Maj Malika 135, uh, yeah. There's also the sutta after. It is also very interesting as well. Number 136, also very interesting. Uh, it's the longer sutta on the analysis of Kama. So <laughs> very similar kind of sutta. Yeah, they're both interesting, yeah. yeah. Hello, Jan. Um, I've been here since Saturday. Yeah, a bit shy to make a confession. Confession. <laughs> so, so, so since uh, today is the last day, I yeah. have to tell you that um, before I came across, I'm new to the teaching, so I do not know what is happening in the community much. Yeah. Uh, but before I came across a uh, the post uh, on the BGF about uh, your event, just a few weeks before that, I have had a thought of uh, uh, wanting to meet you. Because I have followed you, uh, I have watched some of your uh, long workshops on YouTube. Okay, yeah. And I have benefited from them in one way or another. Yeah. Uh, so although I have a, I have uh, the opportunities to meet physical Dhamma teachers, I also find that uh, uh, virtual Dhamma teachers are helpful yeah. to fill in the gaps. So I thought that... Um, it would be a pity that uh, I would not be able to go down to Perth yeah. to the monastery and meet you or sit in your talk. So a few weeks later, I came across the post and I hesitated because it's not a free event. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, so I thought, okay, I'll give it a, a, a contemplate on that. See if they still have seats a week later. Yeah. If they have, maybe I will rethink and um, the seats were available. And on top of that, the event is not far from my house. <laughs> okay. Good. So uh, that's the first thing. Yeah. And second thing is, um, whenever I attend a talk, mm. I try to be consciously an att attentive listener. Mm. And I have read in the sutta that there are two types of listeners in a Dhamma talk, mm. and each of them have uh, their own uh, benefits. Um, and I found that sometimes um, I'll be think I, I try to be a bit unique. So I think of unusual questions in my mind. And I'll be contemplating, should I ask or should I not ask? Yeah. Um, very often I find that the speaker tend to speak on the same subject. Yeah. So I wonder um, if unification of mind mm. does not just happen in, a, in samadhi, samadhi, but it can also hope, uh, happen um, at these kind of moments. It's like kind of, uh, you know, picking up the waves, same frequency. Is there such a thing? So, so now you mean unification between two different people? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Like yeah. two people kind of having the same thought? Or even or a group of people. Say again? Or even a group of people, a collective it, consciousness. Yeah, collective consciousness. Okay. So, yeah. So, um, okay. <laughs> I would say that uh, usually when we talk about unification of mind uh, in, in the suttas, it usually means a, a personal experience of your own mind coming together. Uh, doesn't, it doesn't really have any reference to between people, but it refers to your personal experience. And usually, 
the mind is usually very diverse. It tends to move you know, all over the place. It goes here, it goes there, it moves around. The unification of mind means that it stays on one spot. It doesn't actually move around anymore. So if you're doing breath meditation, it means that you're staying with the breath. Yeah? So it, unification of mind is personal experience. It hasn't got anything to do with uh, how it, you know, we relate between people. Uh, However, that, is that possible that we have the same you know, thoughts or we're kind of moving in the same direction? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. It can happen. Yeah. Yeah, and especially in a group like this, when everyone is kind of following the same thing, same ideas, yeah, we can expect that there often will be similar kind of thoughts, similar kind of questions even. Yeah. Uh, so why is it that I speak on the things that you are thinking to talk to ask about? And the, the answer is simply that uh, uh, it's not because I'm reading your mind or anything. Uh, it's just because... Uh, it's natural that with, you know, we are talking about the same subject uh, and I have been talking about these things for many, many years now. And so I know all the questions beforehand. Uh, so I know, and I know what you're going to ask without even you opening your mouth. I know what you're going to ask because it's kind of obvious in a sense. Uh, and this, this, there's a standard thing, standard things that everyone wants to know uh, that I also wanted to know when I started out. Yeah. And so you talk about those things and that's why it seems like I'm explaining what you are thinking here. So it's kind of just... Uh, the universality of the human mind. We're all the same. This is kind of, it sounds boring, right? We're all the same. It sounds really boring, but it's, it's just the unfortunate truth that we are basically the same. We have the same desires in our life. We have the same aspirations. We have the same problems, the same issues. And it doesn't matter where in the world you are. Yeah, people are the same everywhere. You travel around the world. Actually, not that interesting. Yeah. People want to go on holiday to various places. What do you see? Okay, the food is a little bit different. The whatever, the customs are a bit different. Yeah, in Thailand they go why, in the West we kind of shake hands. Yeah, you know it's, uh, and so uh, it so so that is um, that that is the reason why these things happen. It's, I think it's more appearances than than reality. Yeah, yeah. you happy with that or unhappy with that? Yeah, okay, <laughs> okay, very good. Yeah.